Do you want to cut tails, knock out monsters, do elemental damage, or do you want to just do a shit ton of damage regardless of element? Maybe you'd rather CC the monster to lock it down for yourself and your teammates to sleep bomb or have a solid bit of damage. Or perhaps you'd like to poison that screeching elder dragon and knock its black aura down a peg. No, what you'd rather do is buff up your teammates, right? Well, guess what? You don't have to choose anything. Yeah, you can do most of or all of it simultaneously with one weapon. And before you hop into comments saying, well, technically blank weapon can do all these things, well, let's see it do it with the efficiency of the light bow gun. Not gonna happen. But let's go ahead and jump right in and show off this pellet spraying, pierce ammo pissing DPS monster that comes in such a tiny package. Now, if you watched any of my previous videos or streams, which you can catch on Twitch, you'll know that I'm a sucker for status weapons. I love locking down with paralysis, doing dot damage with poison, or sleep bombing with sleep status. But it doesn't stop there. The beauty of the light bow gun is that there's plenty of examples where you can get quite a few of these CC options jam-packed into a single light bow gun. You're never not going to have some form of CC with a light bow gun. The question with each bow gun you make is how much CC do I want? Then you venture further down the path and ask yourself, do I want to be able to rapid fire these devastating bullets? Do you want some paralysis and sticky ammo with the Zenogar light bow gun, or do you literally want every status on one bow gun? Then the Camellios light bow gun is for you. Wait, you're saying you want every status and you want to be able to rapid fire them? All right, let's not get too greedy. That's just ridiculous. Oh, I guess the K9 light bow gun does that. Huh, this honestly isn't anything new. If you were looking for the best lockdown option, it's always been Light Bowgun. What other weapon is going to poison, paralyze, sleep, and knock out a monster all in one hunt? And it can't be understated just how much this opens the door for damage. If you've ever played Charge Blade, you know how shitty it feels to miss an SAED. You great sword mains know just how annoying it is to think you have that final true charge slash locked onto a monster just for it to leap away. But what if it was sitting there just waiting for you to unleash the beast? Obviously, there's so many things that come into play when you're calculating just how good CC is, like wake up modifiers, hit zones, etc. But what is undeniable is that it's good and Lightbow Gun is the master of this craft. You have a plethora of guns to choose from that have different combinations of CCs, so the only thing left to do is figure out which one you want to inflict and go for it. Outside of the different CC ammos, you have your straight up damage dealers. There's honestly quite a few choices here too. You can go with Pierce, which is pretty much the ammo that you can go to as a default if you're just looking to melt monsters. There are definitely monsters that are better matchups for a particular ammo, but with Pierce, the general idea of line it up and shoot down the body is still going to result in you destroying a monster with extreme prejudice. This is further pushed by the fact that the Nargakuga light bow gun exists in Rise. I mean, just look at that affinity, and the fact that you can get rapid both Pierce 1s and 2s. You honestly don't have to be a bowgun vet like Angbata to know that this thing is going to result in a reign of terror. This is another thing that was pretty much the staple in the series, especially as of late. If you have the damage numbers on, I won't lie, it feels good seeing all of those orange numbers pop up as you fire off those piercing bullets. The numbers themselves aren't huge, but if you actually took a minute to count them all up together, you'd be even more impressed. But we don't do math on this channel, nerd, so just start blasting and enjoy the power trip. Spread ammo, which I have to admit is my favorite ammo type of the bunch, is your first of two shotgun types. You're getting a bunch of bullets that are going to center on a specific area, especially as you get closer to the target. One of the bigger differences between pierce and spread ammo is a little thing known as critical distance. Piercing ammo is actually going to incentivize you to get a little bit of a distance back from the monster, while spread is going to have you right in the face of the monster, and honestly that's not a bad thing because typically that's a pretty solid hit zone for most monsters. It also gives you that Rambo effect where you just don't give a damn that the monster is rearing up ready to smash you and you just fire away. Throwing on the skill ballistics goes a long way when it comes to critical distance and spread ammo. The second of the shotgun types is shrapnel ammo. This one is literally a point and shoot ammo type. It'll seek out those juicy hit zones on a monster every time you fire away. I particularly like using shrapnel on a monster like Zenogre. Shooting that shrapnel and having it magnetized to its head is a pretty easy go of things, especially with the amount that it likes to jump around and move around and move its head. But the main reason I love shrapnel ammo, rampages.
It's an absolutely incredible feeling to go into a rampage with shrapnel ammo and have the gong go off. You literally melt multiple monsters at a time, and especially the topple prone ones like Anjanath. I'm not a huge fan of rampages myself, so anytime that I have to do them, I either bring the Magnamalo Lipo gun or the Toaster minigun. Outside of rampages, it's definitely weaker than spread, but it's not bad to have as a backup to it, or if you need to close the distance on a monster first. Last but not least, we come to normal ammo. It's for sure the most accessible as you don't have to have as many berries in your pouch and you have unlimited normal one ammo. This is about as straightforward as it gets when it comes to the ammo types. You aim for the weak spot and shoot. No need to line the monster up right like you do with Pierce or making sure you're close enough to make multiple shots hit like with Spread. There's beauty in the simplicity of normal ammo. Taking on Rajong, I love using the Kashala Deora Lipo Gun to fire off those singular normal three shots, knowing each one of those that hit its head are doing a solid amount of damage. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that Pierce and a couple other ammo types are still the ones you're going to gravitate to for damage, but don't discount this ammo altogether. To cap off the discussion of these ammo types, you can be rest assured that each of them can have their own damage increased simply through different ammo up skills. Pierce up, spread up, and normal up. If your light bow gun of choice can rapid fire any of said ammos, you can then slot in some rapid fire up to further increase your damage output. Throughout the updates, it got easier and easier to slot these things in, so create some decos in profit. Alright, listen, if you don't believe me by now, maybe you'll believe a much more experienced veteran gun sexual. Ah, yes, the light bow gun, a very versatile weapon. You can stun like a hammer, buff like a hunting horn, and slice like a long sword. These are just one of the few things this little compact gun can do. All of these are accessible with the press of a single button. Branded as one of the cheese weapons in Rise, don't be fooled. In order to reach peak cheese, one must know the right ammo to use for each monster. Have a full grasp of a gun's recoil and reload, ammo management, and the monster's very mechanic. Knowledge is key. So there was a reason I didn't really include sticky ammo in the CC portion of this video, because it kind of deserves its own section, along with slicing ammo, because these two things are pretty devastating as a combo. Honestly, even on their own, they're still extremely potent. But if you're in the market for a uh, monster tail, I'm telling you that Sticky and Slice is literally the best way to go about it in the entire game. I always find myself getting so anxious just waiting for which one of the slicing shots is going to pop off and cut the tail. See, in Rise, slicing isn't just a good way of cutting tails, it's honestly pretty good on spots that are vulnerable to cutting damage in general. There's quite a few monsters that have that very exact vulnerability right on their noggin. Bring your slash berries for crafting, maybe throw on some spare shot, and throw on that crit build I'm sure you already have. You'll definitely be surprised at how fast you break parts, but even how fast you take the monster down in general. Oh, and for sure toss in rapid fire up if you're going to be going with the Zenogar or Izuchi light bow gun. But when it comes to sticky ammo, this isn't really a new thing as it was extremely potent in Iceborne as well. Something I found pretty surprising as well is just how prevalent sticky ammo is across the board with each light bow gun. It's honestly to the point where I'm genuinely surprised if a bow gun doesn't have sticky ammo. I'm definitely not complaining though. Having that last shot pop off and send the monster flying onto its side is for sure a dopamine rush, but if we take it back to the CC of things, it's such a fantastic way to open the door for damage, specifically opening the door for you to shoot a bunch of cluster bombs as your teammates rush to the head of the monster. You even have ways of increasing this explosive damage through the artillery skill or the newly introduced rapid fire up skill. Something else you can do that's fun, but I do need to put a trigger warning for those of you that refuse to step outside of the meta, you can throw on some slugger to get even faster KOs and feel that much more omnipotent. Seriously, take a minute to try out this combo. The good news is you have plenty of options. You can go with the Zenogar or Magnamalo Lipo Gun, or if you're looking for a little less grindy option, you can go with the Izuchi Lipo Gun. All three of these options have both ammos and have their own pros and cons, which speaks even more to the versatility of the Lipo Gun. Magna is powerful and has level 3 stickies, but you lose out on rapid fire. Zenogar has rapid slicing, but you can't move while firing it. Find what clicks with you and fire away. If you're the type that likes to bring elemental weaknesses to a monster fight, then you will definitely take a liking to the light bow gun in this aspect. 
Each light bow gun has certain elemental ammos and shots that they can utilize. This is to supplant the fact that bow guns themselves don't have inherent element or status. It goes pretty much as you would expect. The Rathalos light bow gun can fire fire ammo, Zenogre can fire thunder ammo, Gosrog can fire ice ammo, etc, etc. But this is literally just the surface level of elemental gunning. Why, you ask? Because there's two different types of elemental shots. You have your normal elemental shots, and then there are piercing elemental shots. Again, we already circle back to the versatility that is light bow gun. Not only can you take into consideration of what element the monster is weakest to, but you can also decide on whether you want a bow gun that fires piercing element or not. I myself tend to love using pierce element on those big body boys like Diablos, Camellios, and then the long and slender gents like Mizu and Almudron. The fun doesn't even stop there though. We can dive a little deeper into our bow guns and find a rampage skill that happens to be present in Rathalos and Almudron weapons. Element Exploit basically says, hey, I see you're doing your homework and finding those juicy elemental hit zones. Wouldn't it be a shame for the monster if something increased the damage you do to them? You definitely have the bow guns that are typically the go-to for their respective elemental shot, just as you do with Blade Master weapons, but factors like Rapid Fire, Element Exploit, and Piercing definitely give you more to experiment with and think about. Another good thing, the elemental boost skills are very easy to slot in being level 1 decorations. If you enjoy building specifically towards a monster's weakness and vulnerabilities, grab your light bow gun and start optimizing. You could really summarize the light bow gun by saying it has peak power and versatility. You can rain down piercing bullets, fire explosive mines onto a monster's back, and proceed to precisely shoot said mine to ramp up the damage. I didn't really go over the silk mines for light bow gun because I personally think they're pretty meh, but people are more than welcome to elaborate in the comments. You have quick twitch movements that will have the monster thinking it has you exactly where it wants you to be, and just like that you're right out of reach. But that's not the end. You're right outside of that hitbox and right in the monster's face. Maybe you have some spread ammo loaded up and you fire away. Or maybe you have pierce rounds loaded up so you take the time to build distance to get back into your crit range. No matter what you decide to do, you're going to have a range of options because of the variety of ammos, recoil, deviation, and things you will need to take into consideration depending on what light bow gun you use. Like Angbata said, to reach peak cheese, you must know what ammo to use on the monster. Believe me, the power of light bow gun cannot be denied, but reaching that max potential doesn't come without knowledge, awareness, focus, and skill. I didn't really get to access the gunner weapons as much in world due to some accessibility issues, but I got to dive right into the deep end of the pool of power in Rise. And do not doubt the amount of fun that you can have with these things just because of how powerful Light Bow Gun may be. Every single move, especially in the end game, gives you that tingle down your spine knowing that you could be erased with a single shot. It's a beautiful dance with death, but it's an exhilarating one at that. But that's gonna be it for this one. Light bow gun is something I didn't really get into outside of maybe the 5th gen experience, but I'm glad I did because damn is it fun. I want to give a huge shout out to Angbata for not only dropping knowledge and wisdom, but also for being my first ever guest in a why I love video. I will absolutely be leaving a link to his channel in the description, and if you need any kind of light bow gun info, look no further. If you enjoyed the video, please do feel free to subscribe and leave a like. Let's talk more about Light Bowgun in our Discord server where you can also find a link to in the description along with a Patreon link if you want to further support the channel. Have a good night, happy hunting, and I will see you guys in the next video.